what's some of my biggest takeaways as shifting from living there and becoming a property manager it was different it was it was different and not I, i'll just full disclaimer i've only had one apartment so if i've only lived i only had one landlord and my landlord was very um hands off i i saw them the first time i signed my lease and i did not see them ever again Welcome to the Aid to Assets podcast, the ultimate podcast for aspiring real estate investors. I'm your host, Tiffany Watson. Join me as we discuss real estate investing for nine to fivers. We'll talk about everything from money mindsets and property ownership and different strategies you can use to invest in real estate. I want to empower investors, especially those of us who are working full time, who want to navigate the world of real estate, uncover the secrets to building wealth, generate passive income to achieve financial freedom. Equip yourself with resources from experts, practical tips, and step-by-step guides on how to kickstart your real estate journey. We'll also hear from nine to fivers who started to build their own portfolios, what they did and how they did it, so you can do it too. Tune in and transform your main job into your biggest silent investor in your real estate investment business. This is your Aid to Assets. Hello, everyone, and welcome to an episode of the Aid to Assets podcast. I am your host, Tiffany Watson, where we help nine to fivers who are jump starting their careers into real estate investing. We are going to help you start and scale your real estate portfolio by listening to nine to fivers who've done it first and also hearing from the professionals who help them to be successful. So I am so excited for my guest today. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell the folks who you are and what you do. Hello, everyone. <laughs> My name is Charlie Skibbs. I am um, in the Fayetteville, North Carolina area. Um, I am a nine to five I'm an instructor here at the local community college. And um, I literally work nine to five. Um, it's just a regular worker. And um, I've been in education since um, early 2000s, early 2000s. So I have a a plethora of years in the education system. Um, and educators know, you know, we don't get paid a lot. And then, you know, on top of working those extra hours, um, it can be done. It can be done with a lot of strategy and just planning and implementing real estate can be done even at the level of an educator. So yeah, I'm from Eastern North Carolina, little old town called Babro, North Carolina. So I didn't grow up in the big city, don't have a lot, didn't have a lot of knowledge of owning properties and whatnot. So everything I've learned has been by the grace of God that I've been in the right place at the right time to get me to where I am on today. So come yes. on, won't he do it? So <laughs> won't he do it? <laughs> let's go ahead and well, first, I love to start with receipts so people know why they should even be listening. So tell people about how the property that you have and when did you first invest? So the property I own, properties I own now. My first Come property, on, properties. <laughs> properties, yes. <laughs> it's a little town home, um, uh, town home here in um Fayetteville. Half a duplex is where I first started. I actually initially lived in it for a few years, a number of years. And then I dabbled into owning an investment property while I was living in that first property. And I moved out of that property and now renting that property. And I'm in a primary residence and primary residence now, which I'm hoping to convert to another rental property in the next couple of years. Love it. Love it. And so one of the reasons why I definitely wanted to get you on the show is because we want to tell people that it's super easy, even if you just start with one house that you're living in, but just having the goal of, I know I want to accumulate more houses, one house at a time is all that it takes. So let's talk about when you first got started, when you bought your town home initially, did you know that you wanted to eventually go into real estate investing? Crazy thing is, I could not remember this moment when, um, you know, as I, you know, over the years, but I was uh, going through some boxes the other day and one of my first apartments I was in during a a time frame and I printed out some notes about how to get started with real estate and how to own properties. So that gift was already in me and I had let it lay dormant for a, a long, long time. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it's so important to know who you are and know where you're going and believe that it will happen. Because if it's your destiny, you can run from it all you want to. You can forget it. You can put it on the back burner. But it's, it's going to come to fruition. And I, I have the ability already and the tools already within me to do it and just forgotten about it. Um, fast forward a couple of years, um, I just wanted to um, own a property and that was it. And then I was approached, you know, hey, what about owning some property? And I was like, okay, well, let's see. And a property actually came up that I was able to afford and and everything worked out. And, and bada bam, bada boom, I was able to get, you know, everything together. And I ended up getting a investment property while I was living in my property. And then I said, you know what, let me do a little bit more research. The property that I was in my first primary um, um, townhome, primary residence townhome, I was able to convert that by house hacking. Um, So I pretty much let someone come in and live with me for a few um, months or years, I can't remember, uh, for a little while. And um, we were able to both just save our money and um, I was able to purchase the home that I'm in now. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So there's so many good things that I want to yeah. unpack here. So first of all, so you talked about being an educator. And so y'all, fun fact, Miss Gibbs is actually my teacher. So yes. I absolutely yes. had to get her on the podcast. She was one of my favorite, <laughs> favorite teachers. Her class was always lit. And she was a math teacher. And let me tell y'all, yes. I'm a realtor. So yes, I run numbers, but I did not like math. But Miss Gibbs class was everything. <laughs> So you are you excellent talked about, student, excellent, excellent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so you talked about though educators and the salary. So I started my career as an educator as well, right there at the same school. So talk about what was it like on an educator salary trying to save for that first town home? It was a challenge, and um, yeah, it was a challenge. I was going to say it was a challenge, but something that I've learned. Um, over the years that when you're a Joshua or when you are a trailblazer, you're going to have to do some things that people tell you not to do. Okay. And Mm -hmm. so I did something that they tell you not to do. So what I actually ended up doing is I borrowed against my 401k for my first townhome. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was going to be in education for years. And I knew they already told me, okay, here's your plan. You can either pay it back in three years and five years or whatever the increments were. And so I said, you know what? I can do this. I could totally do this. People borrow against their 401k all the time. And, you know, for just like purchasing like small things or any small loan to upgrade their house. How about I do this to invest in me? And so that's what I did. I used some of my 401k money as a down payment for my first home. And that just opened the door to everything. I was able to pay that money back because it's automatic when you're an educator, you, they just automatically take it out of your check. So it's not like something that you have to like gruel over and they'll tell you and give you different options of what to take from your check. So that's what I did. I, I did the unthinkable and I brought it against my 401k and um, that that's pretty much what I did. Yeah. Wonderful. And so we've been hearing, having a lot of conversations for sure, because we're hearing that this is a lot more common than what we have were initially taught. Of course, when we were taught about 401k, first, it was even just trying to get us to invest in them. And so for many right. of us, we are investing heavily in our 401ks, but that money, I mean, we got to wait till retirement to touch it. And so we are trying to make some moves now. And so being willing to t- take a step of faith and you better come on and talk about that, Joshua, you got to do something different. <laughs> you saw something. And so in order to see what you saw, you got to do something different than what, the, what you've seen before. And so being willing to take that step of faith to borrow against your 401k Having it sounded like you sought counsel on, okay, so if I do this, what does this look like? What is the plan? And then you were able to to acquire that first property. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Oh, amazing. Now then the house hacking, because we hear a lot about house hacking, and especially a lot of people are talking about it in terms of multifamilies. We don't live in an area where there are a lot of multifamilies. There's some, but also you're competing in this crazy market. And so I love the when you talked about house hacking, because we get grown and act like we don't know what it has means to have a roommate. Why are we playing? We know this is not our forever home. <laughs> Let's get these coins. So talk to us about yes. how that process started. 
Yes. So I, I had someone, thankfully, I had someone that was close to me that their lease was coming up and they also had the vision of the desire to own a home. And they were trying to actually figure out how am I going to do this and, you know, have a vision to where I want to go because I'm going to have to have no down payment. I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to do that. I have to get furniture. You can't get moved. I said, well, just sell everything you have. Move in with me. And so we came up with an agreement. Even though this person was really close to me, I still created a lease. I still made it legal. I still did the right thing and covered me and covered that person. So that if mm-hmm. anything were to happen, we were still covered legally, even though, you know, this was a close relationship. It, we had to still keep it professional. Mm-hmm. So we came up with an agreement and I actually crunched the numbers before we actually sat down and had this meeting, the lease and everything, just to make sure that everything was going to be fair on her side and my side. And thankfully, everything worked out. I was able to save my money and purchase this home. And she was able to save her money and move on to the next level as well. So it all worked out for us. And it was only a two bedroom house. It was sitting empty and you have to see opportunity for what it is. You have an empty space. Why not use it? Why not help someone or at least rent it out to someone um, temporarily? Because you have to look for ways and avenues to make it here in this life and period. So if you can't see an opportunity, make an opportunity. Yeah. Miss mm, Gibbs, that's so good. That's so good. Because yeah. I love the fact that one, you had the vision first. So you went ahead and bought this property. And I would imagine that also impacted this person because they saw you do it. And so then you created a win-win situation for both of you all where you have the mortgage. Of course, if one person's paying, it's going to be a lot more than two. So with two people, you're able to both save and benefit from this less, we know rent mortgage is usually our biggest life expense. And so any way that we can cut that down, come together, and then we're both able to figure out what our next step is going to be. That is so, so cool. Now I have to ask because a lot of people, we have this conversation and the first thing they say is, well, what if I want to spend that money? Like I'm getting somebody else to help me pay the mortgage. Shouldn't this just be extra money in my pocket? How did you battle with that? Did you already know you wanted to have another investment property and that was your intention or what was that process like for you? That, that was my intention to have another property and the key to anything that you're you're working with is to stay focused. If you're not focused and you don't have your why, you will easily be strayed. You will easily get distracted when you have um, a purpose or a plan. So staying focused and making sure you keep your why the main thing. So I won't sit here and say that I banked every single penny that I cannot, you know, <laughs> sit here and say that because I, I do love, you know, things. So every now and then, you know, I, I don't maybe treat myself, maybe go out and get an expensive dinner or some something minor, you know, mm-hmm. that I really couldn't do. But I still, you know, stayed focused because you don't want to keep things off balance as well. You want to make sure you have your, you know, your fun and your play as well as your work. If you work too much, you'll end up losing some key, you know, key and significant times in your life. So, you know, you want to enjoy it a little bit, but you have to keep the main thing, the main thing, especially when you're getting money, enough money to cover um, everything in your household. You know, if that's the way you have to set up that the person who's coming in pretty much covers everything, you have to stay focused because it, it can be pretty tempting. So it is important to have your mindset right when it's time to, you know, to focus on that purpose and, and, and go down that, that route of destiny. If you don't have the right mindset, you can easily slip back to those things that are of comfort to you. Mm-hmm. I, 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 we were in church the other day and uh, other Sunday, mm-hmm. and we were talking about how sometimes when you're tempted, you will go to that thing that you, that you always go to that, that thing you came out of. So if you love to shop and you love to spend uh, money on expensive things and something comes crashing as a problem, you're going to go back to that thing that you're, you're used to doing. So you have to make sure that you, you stay focused and you keep people around you who are going to keep you accountable with that, that mindset. Keep people around you that, that know where you want to go and, and see where you're going as well. 
So you can kind of rig, hey, I saw you trying to do this. Let this let's go on, pull that in. You know, you're trying to get this home. Why why are you going to the mall? This is the second time you're going to the mall this week. <laughs> so yeah, just keeping that that focus and that mindset is very important when you're trying to go to that next level. That is so good, Rim. There's so much that you're gonna have to clip out of this. First of all, keeping the main thing the main thing. We can say that twice for the folks who didn't hear it the first time. Like, it's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy to get distracted. We set a goal and then the goal is working. And like you said, we can go back to what's familiar. I know me, I'm going to take a flight immediately. I'm ready. I'm ready to go on vacation. And so I have to remind myself, do you really (laughs) need this plane ticket right now when you know this is what you're trying to focus on? And so you mentioned keeping your why right really top of mind. What was your why that kept you? Because you can hear your conviction. What was your why that kept you motivated during this time? Well, my why was pretty much I knew this was what God had already purposed and designed for me, you know, for me. And so if I were to wait another year, I I don't know if he would have graced me to get me to where I should be based Mm -hmm. on, you know, where I am. So I had to make sure, okay, this is God's plan. This isn't my plan. This is something that Charlize wants to do because Charlize is just Charlize. (laughs) You know, I just have my finite mind, but he has such a great plan. Mm -hmm. For me, so I have to make sure that, but first of all, focus on what he wants me to do. And second of all, I I want to do better than than, than my mom. My mom Mm -hmm. always told us, look, I did did great, but I want you to do even better than what I did. And that is going to take a lot of sacrifice. That is going to take a lot of you doing things that you've never seen before. So you have to stay focused. You have to make sure that you do better than I than I did. I only had these resources in this small little town, this small little area, but you can do so much more. So just make sure that you are um, just staying on that right plan and and keeping keeping focused that you you want to use this as a great income. You could you could potentially retire from this. You could potentially just do this full time, even if you know teaching is your passion, teaching is your gift. You may want to have that, um, that that income on the side to supplement what you're doing. And so that, you know, if you want to just use that money for vacation money or if you want to use that money for something else in your life or just, you know, just let that money just roll or just stack that money up for your legacy down the road. You have to, you know, just keep focus and know that this is, is this is something that God is giving you. This is beyond your gift. This is beyond your talent that you have of teaching. And this could be, you know, your your stream of income for you to do whatever it is God wants you to do, whether it is letting that be the main thing or you teaching on the side or whatever it is, you have to stay focused. And and that's, you know, something my mom just is just still still to me, you know, just keep your why your why. So your why is make sure you're doing God's plan and making sure you know exactly what he wants you to do with whatever that stream of income is. That is beautiful. That is so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. So you mentioned that while you were house hacking, you still got a lease, even though this was a close relationship. Tell us a little bit more about one, how you even knew how to create a lease. Walk us through that process to start off. There are so many resources out on the um, internet, just in general. So since I was in the home and I had already had the I rent the, the the rental property investment property at that time I had uh, access to Bigger Pockets. I'm not sure if you know Bigger Pockets is it's, it's kind of like a real estate community. And so mm-hmm. um, I went ahead and upgraded to the highest level I could, the pro level. And they had so many resources, so many forms already done. So I did not have to reinvent the wheel. That's something that people do all the time. You, people think that you have to come up and create all these things and be so creative and, and be so innovative. Sometimes somebody's already done it. If there's a wheel out here that's working, use that wheel. It's, it's, it's there for your usage. So I, a lot of the forms that I use are from different platforms that I just that's, that I just visit over the years. And Bigger Pockets is one of those, those um, platforms that I use a lot. 
Love it. Yeah, Bigger Pockets is an amazing and amazing resource. We'll definitely link that in the description for people if they want to check it out. But it has great forums. But like you said, forums and calculators when you're trying to think about, was this a good deal? So that's a fantastic resource to share. So you had this property, you were renting it out. So talk us then about the next one. What happened there? Hey, y'all. Tiffany here. Are you looking to purchase or sell real estate? As you know, I'm your aide to assets and I want to help you with all of your real estate endeavors. Whether you're local here like me in the Fayetteville, North Carolina area, I can then help you purchase or sell your next property. If you're looking to purchase or sell outside of North Carolina, let me know too. I can still help you. I have a team of agents all over the country that I can connect you with to partner on your next deal. Let's get to the closing table, y'all. We buy our way to wealth, whether that's buying right or selling better. Can't wait to hear from you. Click on the link in the bio if you want more information on how to personally work with me or an agent on my team. Talk to you soon. So the next property that I, I have, which is, you know, I, like I said, I have the, the primary property. The next property I consider like my, my first investment, the, the, the rental property. So I'm going to revert back to the property that I lived in my primary residence. That's I consider that my next property. It's doing well so far. So I I I come I came up with a couple of plans to um, just rent that space out. And like I said, a lot of the stuff that, that that's out here, it's 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 out here. So I, I knew, you know, the person who was staying in that property was going to actually um, have to to leave. And I was like, OK, well, well, so far I've had luck with just getting people in those properties. So. Um, so thankfully, I'm not sure if you wanted to know about how I actually got the, the tenants in the property or not. But again, I went on YouTube and found like a list of things. Okay, how do you get a tenant into a property? How do you, um, you know, vet people? And I just went down the line. I was like, okay, I like this. I like that. I don't like that too much. So I kind of kind of piece things together in order to create this property that I have. So because the first time I did it, the first time I went and got the rental property, I just stuck some people in there, and that was a bad mistake. And we can talk about that a little later. But, you know, as I've grown, I've learned just how to uh, take the, take that property that I, that I was in. And it was so easy to convert it to a, from primary to rental. All I had to do was just let uh, my insurance company know that, hey, I'm no longer living in this property. It's going to be considered an investment property. And it was it was an easy switch. I let the insurance company know and the mortgage company know. And it was a, that was an easy switch from from that perspective. But, you know, just getting the tenants into the property, it was a learning curve, I'll say. <laughs> Absolutely, because now you're a landlord. And so it's one thing when you're living in the property. I feel like if you have a roommate, especially when they know this is your house, they're going to take even better care. You sitting right here. So you can't mess up my house and I live here. But now you shift it where you are right. a full on landlord and you are removed from the house and have someone in. So tell us about what that process was like. What were what were some of your biggest takeaways? So some of my biggest takeaways as shifting from living there and becoming a property manager, it was different. It was it was different and not I, I've just full disclaimer. I've only had one apartment, so I've only lived. I only had one landlord, and my landlord was very um, hands off. I I saw them the first time I signed my lease, and I did not see them ever again. So I, unfortunately, I did not have a real um, relationship or real like you know just knowledge of of landlords. So I had to do a lot of research and a lot of learning. Um, as far as landlording is concerned. And I don't think I had any friends at the time who were landlords. I had a lot of friends who lived in apartments and, and were talking about their, their experiences with their landlord. But as you you know can imagine, they were all negative because they were right. all telling me, oh, my landlord you know, isn't doing this and my landlord isn't doing that. So I had to do a lot of research um, into just figuring out, okay, what is my role and what can I do and and how can I bring glory to God? I'm, I know, 
I, I try not to be too spiritual, but I still want to make sure that, you know, what I'm doing, God has to be shown in this thing. So I had to look at the legal perspective and the spiritual perspective of, of what I'm doing as well. So it was a lot of research, a lot of just following people. Like I said, Bigger Pockets was a really, really great resource. I was able to get a lot of chunks and nuggets and whatnot from them. And then from there on, I learned about Facebook groups and we share questions, we share answers. And a lot of the, like I said, a lot of the, like I said before, a lot of the things I was going through, you know, as a landlord or questions I have as a landlord, someone else already had that question. All I had to do was go out there and research what should I do or what, what options do I have at that point? Yeah. That's amazing. And it's so good because one, you can hear how you are definitely still a student of the industry. So this is not something that you just bought and said, okay, I'm going to make a bunch of money and that's it. But you can see how you are still actively working to get better, to understand how you can make this easier for you, but also a good living experience for the individuals that are going to be renting your place. So that's amazing. It's definitely something that I try to emphasize is that there's so much we can learn in real estate because we are essentially opening a new business. We're now in the hospitality business. And so continuing to get better at that, because if that's not something you're familiar with, it's going to be a big learning curve. So what would you say was the hardest part about starting to be a landlord? The hardest part about starting to be a landlord probably would be just the mindset, the mindset and um, the fear. Again, all I heard were, were these um, stories about how bad of a landlord, you know, my, my, my friends were experiencing. So. I, I knew I didn't want to be that, but I knew I had to educate myself on how to be that. So the mindset of, okay, how am I going to do this? And how am I going to do it right? Um, that, that's probably like the, the hardest thing of the land, landlord. Cause you hear about those toilet stories, somebody toilets, you know, are broken in the middle of the night and you have to get up. That's why I don't want to be a landlord. I've had a toilet issue once and the the tenant didn't even want to tell me about it. They were just sharing the bathroom, the other bathroom that was in the unit. And I was like, "Why didn't you tell me?" She was like, "Well, we were fine. You know, everything worked out. Is it wasn't? It's not. It's not. A, it wasn't an urgency." I said, "Okay, well, let me just you know, let me help you. Let me, let me get that done." And I was able to get that done. She was just grateful and thankful. I guess she she had had the bad experience with landlords before. And was mm-hmm. afraid to actually come to me about the issues. So thankfully, you know, I, I'm trying to check up on my my tenants every now and then. And thankfully, you know, she was able to just express, "Hey, this is happening." And I was like, "Please make sure you just reach out to me and let me know." And 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 that let me that let me know that as a landlord, I, I I'm doing all right. I'm I'm doing okay. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. When I have a, a tenant now that trusts me to come to me for things that you know, that need to be rectified. Yeah. Absolutely. That's huge. It's because you definitely want them to trust you because you don't want stuff to be piling up and you not know that there's going on in the house. So that's good. Now you mentioned how important it was to have community of people who were also doing this. Yet when you first started, most of the people that you knew, they were also renting themselves. So you touched on it a little bit, but I love to go a little deeper about how did you go about finding other people that were investing in real estate as well that you could learn from? So a lot of my community that I have are actual virtual communities. I don't have too many people here locally. I have a few but not too many, but a, a lot of the people that I communicate with are, are virtual people I've never met before, but we communicate via messenger and we communicate just in online chats or, or, or forums and whatnot. So just knowing who you can connect with and who to connect with, because all your resources may not be touchable. They may not be around you. So you may have to just reach out and go beyond what you can see and what you can feel to make that community. So I I definitely encourage people not to just find people that you can touch. Of course, you need a few people you can touch and feel, but don't let that stop you from from building the community of people who you may never meet physically in your life. Because you you can definitely learn a lot from people who have been in a business a long time or who are just starting out or, you know, just different levels of people who, who may bring you different perspectives. So, yeah, so my community is 
a little brawl. I'll say that, a little brawl. I love that. And I think it's so important because times have certainly shifted. And so, of course, you know, there was a time back in the day where we were like, don't be talking to strangers on the Internet. That's crazy. But now our world is so connected. And so I'm very similar. I have I have mentors. I have friends that I have never actually been in the same space with. However, the conversations that we've had, what we've been able to share and learn together, being a part of different communities, online groups, it has definitely been a game changer. And so I want people, especially those that aren't in bigger cities, like we're not, we're not in a big city. And so sometimes people think that they're at a disadvantage because they don't live somewhere where they think all of these things are happening. And so still recognizing there are online spaces that we have our phone with us at all times. And so we can connect online for other people that are doing other things. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Reach out. I mean, and don't just, you know, just just make it final or give yourself limits or boundaries. Uh, TikTok is one of the places like I, I've never met some of the people that I follow on TikTok, but they give me such great information and such great perspectives and insights. So it, it doesn't even have to be a dialogue type community. You can just be following someone on YouTube or um, TikTok or whatever um, social media platform that you choose. And just get poured into internally. You don't have to just externally reciprocate or, or just tell them, you know, thank you and have a personal relationship. Take advantage of anything and everything that's good and ethical, of course, um, <laughs> that you that you can to enhance yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. That is why I created this platform. So y'all make sure y'all hit that like and subscribe button here at the bottom. So that way you can continue to listen to interviews of people that are actually doing the things that you're looking to do. This is one of those resources where you can hear these stories, replay that as much as you need to take notes. So that way you can figure out what your game plan is. So let's switch gears a little bit because you started out with the town home. That was your primary house. You saved up money and then you bought a second home. And so you were able to rent out that first home. Were you able to save up the full down payment for your second home based off of the house hacking that you were doing? Yes. Yes. So the first investment property that I brought which wasn't my primary home. I think I saved up for that one as well. But the uh, primary residence that I was in before I came here to my, 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 my current primary residence, I was able to save almost all of that money for my down payment for, you know, for this, this current home. So I strategized, like I, like I said, I, I ran the numbers. I, I saw what I needed to get to that next level. And I put in what I needed to put in and I will, well, I won't, I won't say all of it. I'm, I'm a true believer that if you do God's plan, he'll make a provision. He, he will make sure you are taken care of. So I was so, like maybe a couple hundred dollars, maybe a thousand dollars short of where I wanted to be to, you know, just to start looking for a home. And God just opened this door. I mean, this door just flung open for me to get this, this check. They were just like, okay, wow. we want to thank you for doing this. There's this check. And so I was like, oh, this is going to make a great impact. So I was able to go out and confidently get this current home that I'm in. And I and I give all honor to God. And I and and, and I believe I, I, I believe with my whole heart that it was because I was doing his perfect will and his, his and what he wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. I can't do it on my own. And I had to rely on him. Yes, I was doing the work. And the Bible does say faith without works is dead. So you have to do the work and allow your work to, you know, make room for you. So, so yeah, I was able to save up almost everything. I said almost, almost everything from that house hacking and that door just flung open and I was able to just, just come into this, this new property. Amen. To God be the glory, because he is going to make sure that if you are doing one of the things that my mentor says is that you can never outdo God. And so if you are doing his work and what he's telling you to do, he's going to make sure that he's going to come back over and abundantly because you're not going to outdo him. So I absolutely love that for you. So what was that time span for you in which you were able to purchase each property? What did that look like? 
So the first property I purchased, ooh, I don't know how long ago it was. I'll just say year one. I purchased okay. the property year one. And maybe year six or seven, I ended up purchasing the investment property. So I had the primary residence and then I had year six or seven. Um, year nine, so it's about one or two, maybe maybe three years. Year about year nine, I ended up um purchasing the property I'm in now. So so it's maybe thirteen. Oh well, it's been a thirteen years. I have about three properties. Love it. So year one, you bought the first house. About year six or seven, you bought the second one, and then you cut your time in half. Three years later. And you were able to buy the third one because you the momentum is already building and you learn and what you were doing and you were able to set your intentions of what your what your goals you were trying to achieve. Absolutely, absolutely. That that house hacking, once I learned that, I think I learned that on bigger pockets. Once I learned that, I was like, I do have an extra bedroom. I was like, God, give me an opportunity to to use this and utilize this to to help me to get where I need to be. And I promise you, he, he did exactly that. He made the, the circumstances correct. I mean, right. He made the environment right. And it happened. Yeah. It happened with, with ease. Yeah. With ease. I absolutely love that. Okay. So before we wrap up two things that I always want to make sure to ask is, so the first thing is what advice would you give looking back 13 years, let's say 15 years ago, what advice would you give yourself when you were starting on this investment journey before it actually even started to come to fruition? So the, the advice I'd probably give myself would be, you can do this. You can do that. There is nothing stopping you from doing this. If somebody has done it before, you can do it as well. I think a lot of times we get intimidated when we see people doing things that looks like it's impossible. Well, it can't be impossible because somebody else is doing it. So you can do this. You've got this. You've got everything you need. You have every single strategy. All you have to do is just sit down, pray, and just watch God do the rest. Don't wait. Don't just sit there. But watch God do the rest. Absolutely. I love that. That is amazing. Thank you so much for that. And so the last thing, we're vision casters around here. So let's say three years, five years from now, what is going to be true for you when we look back on this interview? Uh, what is going to be true for me is I, 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 now I have just single family units and I would love to have um, stepped into the multifamily side. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know where it's going to happen. But I, all I can do is just believe God that if he's allow me to do this this far um and it's in my heart's desire and it lines up with his will um that i will continue to be a great landlord and i will continue to do what he wants me to do because some of the tenants that I, I i i've had in the past i do believe that they were meant to cross paths with me for one reason or another and mm -hmm. i just want to be able to continue to do his perfect will but on the next level <laughs> on a mm -hmm. bigger level, on a bigger scale, so I can impact more people. So that's what I, that's where I see myself in five years. Period. We are claiming it. Those multifamily doors are yours. Yes, yes. I love that. Well, Miss Gibbs, thank you so much for joining me today, sharing your experience and your wisdom. I am so very grateful and just excited to see how you will continue to grow your portfolio. Yes, thank you so much. And again, I'm just so, so proud of you and all that you do. I just pray that God just blesses you tremendously and he just enlarges this territory and you just take over the world, girl. <laughs> I receive, I receive all of that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Y'all, this has been another episode of the A to Assets podcast. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so you can be notified of all future episodes. We are going to buy our way to wealth. See you at the closing table. Bye. 
Thank you for tuning in to another insightful episode of A to Asset. Remember, your journey from nine to fiver to successful real estate investor is within reach. Keep learning, keep growing, and keep investing in your future. If you'd like to know more, connect with me on Instagram at A to Asset. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Until next time, happy investing.